All right, so by the end of the day, you can't help but notice that if you've been walking around in heels like these all day, these are five inches, and we'll talk about why I shouldn't be wearing these all day in just a moment. But I'm talking about foot pain. Uh, but of course, you know, you just chalk that off to a busy day running around, or you tell yourself that maybe age is catching up with you. But the truth is, foot pain can be caused by any number of things, and sometimes it can be the signs of something pretty serious. And so with us this morning is Dr. Hillary Brenner, a practicing podiatrist, to talk about foot pain and what we can do about it. Good morning, Dr. Brenner, good to see you. Good morning, nice to see you. So she took one look at my heels, which are five inches, and hers, which are two, and kind of went, no, 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 not good for the long term. But I can attest to that. It's interesting you said that because I spend the day in heels, and then at the end of the day, I've got this foot pain, I've got this ankle pain. Tell us why I have this, and, and then what we can do about it. Sure. When wearing high heels that places our foot in a plantar flex position, that causes increased pressure on the ball of our foot. Our body tries to compensate by having the lower part of our body lean forward, where the upper part of our body leans back. This in turn throws off our center of gravity, which disrupts the normal anatomical alignment. Mm. That's why we become wobbly when we walk in heels. <laughs> Is that the reason? That's the okay. reason, <laughs> and this makes us prone to injuries and foot pain. So let me talk a little bit about my husband here because he has tremendous foot pain. Mm -hmm. He has plantar fasciitis, I think it's Yes, it's plantar called. fasciitis. Um, so men and women can have different causes of foot pain. He does not wear five-inch heels. Right. Which is a good thing. Yes, which is a good thing. But what happens a lot with men is they have a tendency not to rotate their shoes. Ah. Girl, you are so right. They will wear them to the flaps just start talking. Exactly. I mean, that is true. <laughs> exactly. So that makes them more prone to heel pain, fungal infections, oh. and pain in the big toe joint. Mm, not good. So what are some tips that you can give us this morning in terms of preventing foot pain or, or that can help contribute to better foot health overall? Sure. What I recommend is making sure you're wearing the proper shoe size. A lot of people haven't had their foot measured in years. Mm -hmm. So what I recommend you do is go at the ends of the day, make sure you're standing and they measure the length and the width of your foot. Okay. Another thing that's important is for the most part you want to wear heels that are one to two and a half inches. Now I, yes. What? <laughs> what size are these that you have on? They're about two inches. So she's doing the right thing. I am, but I realize too, and I am a female and I like to have fun and go out dancing sometimes. So, but the most important thing, you have to look at wearing shoes similar to like counting calories on a diet. Sure. On a diet, we look at foods, we see how many calories they are. We should look at our shoes, for instance, um, our heels, you know, heels anywhere from three inches above and say those are my hour to two hour shoes. Okay. Look at flats, say they're my three hour shoes. Sneakers with inserts in them are a six hour shoe. So you can wear what you want just in moderation and really count the hours of your shoes. So to have them. the chocolate cake in moderation. Wear the five inch heels in moderation. Exactly. Great way to put it. I can understand it that way. I, I wanted to ask you though, when you do have maybe some foot and ankle pain, could it be kind of an indication of a bigger problem? Could it be a sign of something more serious? I just want to strongly, strongly emphasize that foot pain is not normal. So any type of foot pain, it's so important that you go to see your podiatrist. It could be something as severe as soft tissue tumors, bone tumors or something like your husband has plantar fasciitis, which could eventually lead to further problems. So it's important any type of pain, I want to emphasize again, is not normal. You must see your podiatrist. Foot pain is not normal. Good to yes. know because a lot of times we'll brush it off and say, oh, it's nothing. But it's good to know that it is not normal. Now, how could seeing a podiatrist help in some of these most common examples that you've described to us this well, morning? Well, we take x-rays. We can prescribe MRIs. We can give the proper shoe gear. and. Um, give injections or NSAIDs just to help alleviate and prevent problems. And I also understand that there's a seal of approval that has been given for foot products by podiatrists. What does that mean to the average person out there? Okay, what the um, APMA seal is, is where a product is evaluated scientifically and the, um, the committee on the podiatric seals determines whether that product promotes proper foot health and normal foot function. So basically when you go to the store, you don't know there's so many options to buy. So when you see something with the APMA seal, it's just as good as having a podiatrist coming with you. The APMA is a gold standard of podiatry, so 
you're reassured when you're buying your product. Perfect, and it's called APMA. Yes, APM. American Podiatric Medical Association. Perfect. And you can also go onto their website at apma.org to see a bunch of different products with the podiatric seal. I tell you something, that's great information. Good to know. Thank you so much for coming by and sharing this with us and letting me know I can still wear my four inches for one hour. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for having Thanks. me. Thanks. And if you want more information on the APMA or foot pain, and if you've got foot pain, what you can do about it, simply go to the website. It's APMA.org.